And good morning, Tennessee Valley. Welcome to Tennessee Valley this morning on this Monday morning. It's uh, near the end of July, July 30th. And we welcome you to another week. We're going to be hitting August on Wednesday. So uh, July has been good to most of us. We've had some interesting weather. We've had some, oh man, we've had some hot weather. I know last Thursday uh, we were over at, uh, at Duracell and they have this uh, large TV that gives you not just the temperature, but also the heat index and looked at it and it was 112 as far as the heat index. So it's been a hot July. Let's hope that August gives us a little bit cooler temperatures and maybe, maybe a little rain here and there. Cooler temperatures, of course, because we're getting into football season. And that's uh, one of the things that we're gonna talk about a little bit uh, later in the show. We've, uh, we've got a great show for this morning. We've got the guys from uh, uh, the, uh, the sports show up at W, well, excuse me, up at the buzz, I should say. I'll keep wanting to say WCLE, but it's the buzz. 101.3 FM and we've got Scott, Robbie and Travis who are going to tell us a little bit about uh, what to expect in high school football. A little we'll talk a little college football too. I've got Jeff Salyer here, my friend Jeff from over at Lee University and I uh, asked him to come on. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, about some movies uh, that have uh, uh, been shown not just recently but over the last couple of years. Uh, get into a little bit there. Before we get into the show, I want to mention a few things. As you know, and you can tell by my shirt, uh, I'm with the United Way of Bradley County. And uh, we want to once again remind folks that coming up on August 15th, we've got our kickoff luncheon, our campaign kickoff luncheon at Lee University at the Walker Arena. Special guest, John Smoltz from uh, the old Atlanta Braves days, uh, now doing some, uh, some broadcasting, national broadcasting and he will be our, our kickoff speaker. If you need tickets, and I'll tell you, we've already got about 400 folks who have signed up for the, uh, for the luncheon already. Uh, we, we moved it to Walker Arena for a larger crowd and we're getting a larger crowd, so get those tickets as soon as you can. Call us down at the office, 479-2020, or you can go online to uh, uh, www.unitedwaybc.com and order those tickets online. One other thing that we've got going on on August 4th, we're doing a Stuff the Bus campaign. And that is to collect school supplies for, uh, for our elementary schools for both the city and county. And uh, a lot of times when, when, uh, when the kids uh, have to, to start school, they get the supply list. You, and you'll see those at a lot of the, the, uh, the businesses in town. And some, some uh, some families in our area are, are less able to, uh, to purchase these materials as others. And we wanted to help the schools out as much as possible so that they will have a, a stash of these supplies that they can help the, the, uh, the children with. So we are doing a Stuff the Bus campaign. We're gonna take a school bus, try to stuff it with as many school supplies as we can. It will be at Don Ledford Automotive Center, Debbie Melton, out at Don Ledford is helping us with this and that's where WCLE Mix 104.1 is involved because they're also helping us with this uh, this project. It's on August 4th from 10 to 2 p.m. and uh, we hope that you'll uh, you go ahead and start collecting some school supplies maybe buy some extras when you go to buy some for your children. If you don't have children in school anymore go and uh, and purchase some of the pencils and the the, uh, the glue sticks uh, in a lot of cases, these uh, supplies include uh, disinfectant wipes and hand sanitizer. We have a list of, uh, of those, uh, those school supplies that are needed also at the United Way website, www.unitedwaybc.com. But uh, let's try our best to, to, to fill the, the bus as much as possible. It will be split evenly between the county schools, Bradley County Schools, and Cleveland City Schools. So that's August 4th from 10 to 2 at uh, Don Ledford Automotive Center on North Lee Highway. So we hope that you'll get involved with that as well. As I said, we've got a great show coming up. I've got Jeff Salyer coming up next, and we're going to talk a little bit about movies and uh, talk a little bit about sports a little bit later in the show. So stay tuned. We'll be right back after these messages. At Crawford Pharmacy, we offer custom compounding 
Our pharmacists are known for their attention to detail and unique expertise. So visit us at 2260 Chambliss Avenue, Cleveland, Tennessee. For personal assistance, walk right in or come up to our convenient drive through Crawford Pharmacy, serving our community one person at a time. Bradley County is home to a community of resilient, compassionate families who want the best for each other. The tragedies of the April 27, 2011 tornadoes brought our community together to bring aid to the hurting and helpless. It is time to come together once more. The Bradley County school system is underfunded and our future leaders are receiving their education in substandard learning environments. On August 2nd, you will have an opportunity to further impact our great community by voting for the wheel tax. A vote for the wheel tax will not only rebuild Blue Springs Elementary School, but it will provide a new facility that is engineered to meet the demands that technology places on the infrastructure. The overcrowded Walker Valley High School students and teachers will have much needed space and be able to use academic rooms for their intended purposes. The students and teachers of Lake Forest Middle School will no longer endure the hazardous conditions caused by the elements of nature and deteriorating classroom buildings. British philosopher Herbert Spencer stated, the great aim of education is not knowledge, but action. Would you take action in the name of education and vote yes for the wheel tax? A vote for the wheel tax is a vote for the children and the future of Bradley County. Featuring some of the South's most scenic views, the Mountain View Inn has been a landmark in the Cleveland community for over 40 years. Our executive guest quarters with flat screen TVs and excellent bedding will make any guest comfortable. Carrie's Restaurant is one of Cleveland's favorite with one of the best buffets around. Hello and on behalf of the Hughes family, thank you for so many years of your business and your friendship. And welcome back to Tennessee Valley this morning. Just getting a little information from, uh, from Joe Palo, our, uh, our producer, director, cameraman. Uh, he does just about everything uh, except his spelling's a little off, but, uh, but we're working with him on that. But uh, with me is Jeff Salyer. I hope he spelled your name right. We'll see. S-A-L-Y-E-R. And I've always wanted to say S-A-Y-L-E-R. I get uh, S-L-A-Y-E-R. I get Slayer. Slayer a lot. Yeah. Jeff Slayer. Okay. Yeah. And Jeff is with Lee University. Uh, I believe we have him listed as Movie Scholar. Yeah. And that works out well because Jeff is into the movies. He is a scholar. Have you finished up your uh, PhD yet? No, I'm working on it. I'll be finished hopefully this year. Working on his PhD. He's also a teacher. Teaches over at Lee University. I do. And uh, I got to know Jeff because he helps us with our campaign video for United Way each year, I guess for the last 10 years or so. Something like that. So, uh, but I asked Jeff to come on because whenever I have a topic that deals with movies, uh, rather than ask Ron Gilbert to come on, who, <laughs> no telling what Ron will say, I asked Jeff to come on. Uh, I know we had him on several months ago, right after the Sundance Festival. Mm -hmm. Talked a little bit about that. But uh, recently, I guess in the last, I don't know, two, three, four years, we've seen an influx of movies that are related to the comic books. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I asked Jeff to come in, uh, I was first thinking about The Dark Knight Rises, the new Batman movie. And when I asked him, it was prior to the situation that has happened in Colorado with the, uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the bad thing that happened at the movie theater there. I guess that was uh, a couple of Fridays ago. So, uh, well, it was the premiere mm -hmm. that, that day yeah, that, that it opened. And, uh, but I wanted Jeff to come in and, and talk about it because I have never seen that type, these type of movies all just bunched together. Mm -hmm. It seems like, you know, as soon as one hits, you've got the next one coming on. And, and I noticed it, uh, I guess uh, it started with the Iron Man mm -hmm. uh, franchise. I don't know if you call it a franchise or mm -hmm. not. It is. 
but uh, Marvel has seemed to be the one that has started this succession right. that led up to the Avengers. Well, you see early, um, early on you had the movies like the X-Men movies right. who kind of pioneered the way, championed the way. There had been some movies, we can remember back into the, uh, the late 80s and 90s with the Superman movies and these guys, but there has been a resurgence in these comic book movies with these comic book characters with Spider-Man and the reboot of Spider-Man and then mm -hmm. the Avengers, all the Avenger characters that have their own individual movies and they come together and then the Chris Nolan Dark Knight um, right. series of films. So you see this increase in these type of films and there's a couple of reasons I think that this is happening. I've been thinking about this a while and one of them is a business deal because comic books are, are uh, really familiar to uh, a lot of people in, in different generations because they've been around for a long time and a lot of people get into comic books they mm -hmm. hand them down from generation to generation and new ones keep coming out and I think those characters are synonymous with American pop culture okay. and because of that and because of the popularity of those things they feel like in Hollywood they can make movies about these things and it's going to make money and it does they make money and so these films make money for the most part and that's why they continue to make them because crowds and audiences will flock to a midnight screening of the Avengers or of Batman or the Amazing Spider-Man. But it seems like you, you've got these, these movies that have the, the popular characters, the Spider-Man, mm -hmm. the Superman, the Batman, uh, uh, and, 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 you know, but, but Iron Man was never a big seller right. for Marvel. Then you've got Ghost Rider who, uh, mm -hmm. we had a movie with Ghost, actually two movies, <laughs> yeah. which, well, the second one was a little, little odd. But uh, Ghost Rider was never one of their big sellers. Right. And then you had Daredevil and Elektra. Yeah. They're, and it's like, these were not the big sellers. And they, did they experiment with those before they got to the big ones? Well, what they've done is they, they've run out of stories in Hollywood, okay. it seems like. And I, I think they're afraid to be original a lot of ways. And so they will experiment with some of these lesser known comic book characters or lesser known characters. Um, and sometimes it's successful as in Iron Man. Uh, which I credit Robert Downey Jr. and, sure. and the direction that was there mainly as compared to Elektra or uh, Daredevil or any, some of the others that just kind of flopped. Right. Um, I think when you get star power and you get good directing and good storytelling, that's when these films do well. If you just put a character in there, the character is not going to make a movie. The character has to be faced with some sort of moral dilemma that they can solve or not solve. And I think Part of the reason that the Batman series, we talked about Batman being popular right now, is so uh, did so well in the theaters and has done so well is Chris Nolan and his brother wrote in these aspects of Batman's character and Bruce Wayne's character to be a troubled person, a person with issues and with problems. And even the super the super character, the char the comic book character Batman, mm -hmm. the alter ego, has his own issues. He right. has and he has to fight through. So there's an internal struggle and an external struggle. And I think they do a good job of conveying this angst to audiences of people who have the same kind of struggles. We can relate to these characters, and that's why that makes them um, more popular for audiences to see these characters. Well, I think that's what made Spider-Man so popular when the comic book was popular, mm -hmm. is because you had the teenager right. who was going through all of these teenage problems as well as having these powers right and, and having to deal with with both and you, you know they do really cater to demographics in this as well I mean people in Hollywood are not stupid right. um, and the banks that fund these movies are not stupid they know who they're catering to they know who their demographic is same thing with you talk about movies that cater to demographics same thing with the Twilight series or the Hunger Games they're really catering to this teen tween and in, uh, in some instances early 20s kind of audience but then there's a greater appeal that goes out for some of them, but they know where they're going to make their money at, and that's why you're going to see a lot of these as blockbusters, because blockbusters really are trying to appeal to specific money-spending audiences rather than independent film, um, like at Sundance, that you know, we get to experience sometimes, aren't trying to get reach these uh, big money audiences. They're trying to reach a more artistic, more refined audience. They supposedly right. don't care about the money, but all Hollywood cares about money. Now, uh Recently, you, you've, you've seen The Dark Knight Rises. Yes. Thought it was a great movie? Thought it was a pretty good movie. Best of the bunch, or did you? You, no, liked, you liked the, the second one, did you? I liked the second one. I think that uh, Heath Ledger playing the Joker really uh, drove that film mm -hmm. to, to its status, and I think that film was really tight as far as the plot goes, as far as the characters go. 
you know, the first one in Batman Begins, he really had to, this inception story of who Batman is, he had to drive home all the backstories on Bruce Wayne and Batman and these right. kind of things. In the second one, he was free to uh, explore the characters in depth and this struggle and conflict against chaos and order. And in this last one, he had to wrap it up. And a lot of people, I've talked to a lot of people, and I have former students that are really into films and, and colleagues, and, and, you know, a lot of people don't like this film because they thought it was too, too many stories to try to tie up. Uh, I, on the contrary, kind of liked it that way. Um, I'm a little different from, from a lot of the people that have seen the film. I know, I know a lot of people gave it kind of like a B minus or a B. I kind of gave it like a B plus. Well, don't tell, don't tell us about it because some I of won't. us haven't, haven't seen I won't, it. I won't give any spoilers away. I haven't seen it yet. You know, I, I, I think I told you or I told somebody that I thought the best thing that could have happened would be a cameo with Michael Keaton, <laughs> uh, Adam West, George yeah. Clooney, and Val Kilmer. I will it. say that did not happen. Okay. But there are some pretty good cameos from the previous movies and stuff. Uh, okay. Well, we Just won't. keep your eyes open. Okay. That's all I'm saying if you haven't seen it yet. And that's, that's something that I believe the characters uh, – have driven a lot of these movies. Mm -hmm. You mentioned Robert Downey Jr. Mm -hmm. Who else could have played Iron Man as he did? Right. You, you, you can't picture somebody else. Now, I'm sure there was somebody that probably, you know, that was trying to get cast for that role too, but you just, once they play it, you can't picture anybody. And they're working on Iron Man 3 now, right. where they they uh, filmed in Chattanooga, but not in Chattanooga. Right. We, so, we, we learned that uh, when the Chattanooga Film Society came up a couple of weeks ago. Right. Uh, I, that seems odd because somebody said, because it looks more like Chattanooga than Chattanooga. Well, I read that it was a snowy Chattanooga, and oh. we know that doesn't happen very often anyway, and so um, it's interesting. Well, of course, they're shooting the film on the east coast of, of North Carolina, mm -hmm. and uh, the town they shot the Chattanooga scene is near where they're doing most of their shooting, so it makes sense it makes, financially gonna, for them. You've got to save some money as right. well, especially with Robert Downey even, Jr.'s right. salary. Even with a blockbuster, you're still putting out hundreds of millions of dollars for these kind of movies because audiences expect the effects and the star power. Last couple of years, what's your favorite superhero movie? Oh, man. Uh, Dark Knight. Okay. The second the second Batman movie. Okay. What is your least favorite movie for over the last couple of years? Least favorite movie? Like a, a, total, a superhero? superhero movie. No, not not regular movie. Uh, I, of course, it, maybe it goes back a little far. I did not like Wolverine. Really? X-Men Wolverine. I didn't like that. I did like X-Men First Class. Yeah. Uh, I did. I made an acquaintance with the producer of the original X-Men, who also produced a bunch of the Star Trek films, the mm -hmm. original William Shatner Star Trek films. And he did uh, the Fantastic Four as well. And I talked to him a couple of times. And I said, what's the deal with, with X-Men? And he says, you know, the first couples, which I agree with, the first couple were good. And then when they got involved in X uh, Wolverine, he said, it just kind of went downhill because the producers wanted to sacrifice story for big explosions right. and trying to make this character something he wasn't. And so he, he bailed on the projects. And well, uh, I think they really destroyed Deadpool in it, too, because that was not the Deadpool from the... Right, and a lot of people, a lot of people were kind of, you know, just really disappointed with that. I think that's a lot of people's least favorite. I did not like Daredevil, and I didn't like Elektra either. But that didn't really get into the comic. You know, I didn't really get into the comic books until the movies came out, mm -hmm. and then now I can kind of follow the characters. And a lot of my students and former students, I just had lunch with three or four of them yesterday. And we were talking about it, and they're really into the comic book characters, and they're making predictions of who they think's what. And I think that's part of the fun for audiences and for Hollywood studios, because they will go to stuff places like Comic-Con that just happened mm -hmm. and release new stuff, but then they listen to the audiences for what audiences want. And the comic book audiences want a lot of good things. And the graphic novel audience, you have to kind of separate the two with, with the Watchmen and the 300-type films versus the, the Avengers, Batman-type films. What's the next one that's coming out, do you know? The next I don't know. Superhero. Um, well, we've got Superman, don't we? This, oh, Man of Steel comes out next summer. Damn. Uh, that looked interesting. Somebody said uh, the trailer, because the trailer was on The Dark Knight, or The Dark Knight Rises, and somebody said, somebody's been watching Tree of Life, which is this independent film by Terrence Malick, and it's just gorgeous shot. And su the Man of Steel trailer is just, it's not your typical flash and dash kind of uh, superhero movie. It looks really artistic and really kind of independent. So a lot of people are excited about what that what may happen with that. And I heard they've signed on to shoot a couple more Avengers movies and right, they're going to make some individual stories be between now like another Iron Man and, and a few others, Captain America. Okay. You mentioned, uh, and uh, going away a little bit from, from the comic book movies, you mentioned uh, having lunch with some former students. Mm -hmm. You've got a movie that 
is it still showing? No, or? it's not. It was a one-time showing. Okay, deal. in Chattanooga mm -hmm. by one of your former students. Right. Ella? Ella is the name of the film. And the student, my former student is Miles Matsuno. And uh, I'll be looking for Miles' name to come out uh, a few more times in the next few years. I, I expect big things from him. But Miles is a, uh, he graduated a few years ago and moved to L.A. where he's from and uh, decided he wanted to shoot a short film on his own, raise his own money uh, with some help from some producers and, and some people uh, out there and here and did a Kickstarter and decided he wanted to tape or film in Chattanooga. Mm -hmm. So he filmed the entire film in Chattanooga, Cleveland. We helped him out with some locations and uh, I got to co-produce on that film and we premiered it uh, last week or two weeks ago uh, in Chattanooga, in the Tivoli, where a lot of the film was shot in the Tivoli, okay. and uh, we had three or four hundred people were there that night. Uh, a little bit of news coverage for it, and we think it went really well. Right now, we're um, we've put it into several festivals uh, and waiting to hear back. Uh, we kind of missed the post production didn't get completed on when a couple of deadlines were, so we kind of missed a few. So we're on the back side of it. So we're trying to get into some of these late summer festivals and um, fall and maybe even Sundance, but that's going to be difficult. Well, you say we, so you were involved in this. Yeah, I co-produced it. Okay. There's three producers, and most everybody involved were Lee alum, uh, except uh, one of the actors, the musician and the writer, or the composer and the writer were not. They were Miles' friends from California, but uh, and he brought a cinematographer from California. But most of the actors were mm -hmm. Lee people, most of the people assisting, production assistants, producers. Okay. But Miles directed it and edited himself. He's working on another short right now called Truth or Dare, and uh, he should be finished with that here in the next month or two. You'll let us know when the premiere of that I will, comes if, up. if we get one close by. And we may have an Ella premiere at, at Lee in the fall. That would um, be great. Because of, uh, of his connection with Lee and, and that kind of thing. Well, let us know oh, about yeah. that, and we will. Uh, I'd love to come see it. Oh uh, yeah, it's got. You got to feel good to see your name up there. I do. Producer. And I got to do a little. They Q &A. spelled your name right. They did spell my name right. Okay. Uh, he should. Uh, he had to write it in class. So, <laughs> but uh, I got to. I got to do a little Q and A with him afterwards, and then the audience right. was pretty, uh, okay. pretty pleased. It seems like. Well, if you, uh, you know, if you get out of that and you want to do a comic book, you know, a superhero movie, you, okay. you, you work with uh, Ron Gilbert, I so do. you know you can always put a cape on him and. He could be Walter Concrete. He could he, be. That was his alter ego at one time, so I, you know, I wouldn't. Well, I'm, I'm thinking more in the, in the terms of ambush bug, but you probably <laughs> don't know who that is. But, uh, but Jeff, appreciate you coming on. No I know you've got some things to do. It's uh, always busy over at Lee and always busy in the Video Production Center. Trying to kick off the semester here coming up pretty oh, soon. Oh, yeah. You'll be teaching. I will be teaching a few classes, taking my final, my qualifying exams. Okay. That'll keep me busy and write my dissertation. And next time you be, you're on the show, we'll call you Dr. Salyer. I hope so. Sounds great. Jeff, thank you for being on. We will be back after these messages with uh, those crazy guys uh, from sports up at uh, The Buzz. So stay tuned. Robert Thompson. I'm a partner here at the law firm of Logan Thompson, and I've been practicing law for about 25 years. I focus primarily on complex litigation cases involving serious personal injury. To establish liability, it's important that we thoroughly investigate your case. And we're fortunate here at Logan Thompson to have a full-time investigator on staff, and once we establish liability, next we turn to the issue of damages. Under Tennessee law, you're entitled to be compensated for five elements of damages. First is property damage, and then your medical bills, lost wages, pain and suffering, and lost enjoyment of life. If you or a family member have been injured in an automobile accident, would like to sit down and discuss with us what you're entitled to, please give us a call at your convenience. There's no charge for the initial consultation. I'm Robert Thompson with the law firm Logan Thompson, and we'd be honored to help you.
Kyle Motors, 802 20th Street Southeast in Cleveland is the place to find quality pre-owned cars and trucks. Kyle offers on-the-spot financing on all vehicles on the lot. Each pre-owned vehicle goes through a complete inspection to make sure each car and truck meets the Kyle Motors standard. Warranty and extended warranties available on all vehicles. Kyle Motors will sell you a car or truck that you will be proud to drive for many years to come. See Tony, Bill, Dale, James, or David and let them put you in your next quality pre-owned vehicle. Kyle Motors, 802 20th Street Southeast, phone 790-7100. And welcome back to Tennessee Valley this morning on this Monday morning, July 30th. And these guys aren't used to being up this early in the morning because <laughs> they do the afternoon sports drive. The sports drive. And uh, most sports people are afternoon and evening people. So, that, yeah, this early in the morning is kind of early for us, Alan. You mean you don't get up and listen to Heartline in the morning? Uh, Who? We, Who? Yeah, we, we try not go? to because it kind of starts your day off in a bad mood. Well, and with a headache and stuff like that. We give Steve a hard time, but Steve knows his sports too. He does, but you know, we had him co-host on the show for us a couple of times, and yeah. he brought quilt. Times. Yeah, he brought quilting in there, and we're mm -hmm. talking about Justin Bieber and things like that. So we do not allow him back in the, the sports drive studio. He watches The Bachelor. Yes, that's too, so. kind of. Yeah. Uh, you, you're not really a sports guy when you start watching these kind of shows. Very you should true. be watching. Monday Night Raw or something UFC manly. fighting or something yeah, like that. Something you manly, manly like that. Yeah, exactly. Even if it's, you know, well, find a movie. Put a Clint Eastwood movie uh, yeah. in something. And even if we do, are doing something, you know, kind of romantic with a wife, we don't tweet about it and put it on our Facebook. It's a secret. <laughs> Nobody will know about it. Exactly. And he does. He yeah, does. Uh, well, I've got Scott Williamson with me and Travis Godfrey. Yes. And uh, shout out to Travis because these nice shirts, this is a United Way shirt that I wear. Uh, was done by TG Sales. TG Sales, Sales and Promotions. And TG stands for? Travis Godfrey. Travis Godfrey. He's, He's original. He's yeah. very original. I don't know came where up with that by that. myself. He did? No, your yeah, mom and dad came with that for just, you. Well, yeah. <laughs> That's true. Otherwise, it'd just be G. That's yeah. right. Because no it'd be or just a blank. Blank. Blank sales. And, and we'd fill it in with soup beer or right. <laughs> anything. But these guys are, we're going to talk a little bit about high school sports. Yes. And at first, my idea was, I'm going to bring the coaches in. I'm a, because we've got, uh, uh, oh, we've got Damon. We've got Damon Floyd over at Bradley Central. Who has been there a couple of years. He's been there a few years, done an excellent job with that program, mm -hmm. turned got, it around quickly. You've got a, 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 a new coach at Walker Valley. You sure do, coach Glenn Ryan. Ryan. And then you've got a coach who has moved into the position at Cleveland High School. Well, Ron Crawford actually came in from the middle part of the state to take over the Cleveland oh, okay. High School program. Glenn Ryan was offensive coordinator at Walker Valley last mm -hmm. year, stepped up into the lead role of head coach this year. But I heard these guys interviewing them, and they were talking about specifics about the kids and everything, and I'm going, I think I better bring in the sports <laughs> experts to talk about high school sports rather than me ask a dumb question to a coach like, uh, gee, you got any quarterback? You got a quarterback this year? <laughs> Why, yes, he's been all state for five years, you know, yeah. whatever. They would have found a way around to answer that question early in the season. They yes. don't want to give out any of their secrets or – they would have had the right wording to. But you guys to know that. all the secrets. We know a little bit. You we got do. you got it all. So so tell me, Scott, Travis, you guys, uh, you know, work your work your magic here, and as far as who's saying what, but uh, what can we expect this year locally in our high school football? Well, I think one thing you see, and, and Travis jumping any time here, uh, I think you see a very competitive high school football in our area. I think uh, Bradley County and Cleveland. City, we got some tremendous football teams, some great coaches. You know, uh, Travis in our interviews with these high school coaches, I mean, you just feel the energy and the excitement, the passion behind them, and uh, you know, that's where it all begins. Well, you've got Bradley who had some rough seasons. Now they've had some great success, so they're excited to continue that. Uh, you have Cleveland who's had some rough years by Cleveland high standards. They, you know, they're they're wanting to rebound and and fix some of the problems over there, and they're excited about the season. Then Walker Valley. Um, you know, with, with Coach Ryan stepping in to, to take over as the, as the head coaching position, you know, he's, he's got his ideals and, and, and the new things that he wants to do. So they're, they're all excited. To, two programs that want to start afresh and start new, one that wants to continue what they've been building for the last several years and should be very competitive for all, all three teams this year. And all three teams eventually compete against each other. They, they all three play each other? They do. They, the do. Mm -hmm. they, all, they all three play each other uh, throughout the season. 
and uh, you know, always a great battle. Yeah, you know, in those games, you know, you throw the records out. It don't matter if you're 0 and 9 or 9 and 0. Uh, you know, those you know, in town, in county rivalries, the records go out of the, go out of there, and it's just some great action. You know, perfect example. Two years ago, uh, Cleveland went down to uh, Bradley uh, Central High School, uh, and you know, I think everybody's expecting Bradley to to, to come out on top in that game, mm -hmm. and Cleveland got the better better mm -hmm. of them. Then they come back this past year, uh, ESPNU game Friday night, big time crowd, and uh, you, know, uh, you know Cleveland had a uh, Division One quarterback, Chad Voitek, big yeah. things didn't turn out so well for them that night, and, and Bradley got the better of them. So as you can see. Uh, you know the records, the who, who's predicted to come out on top, whatever. All that's thrown out when these when these intercounty battles happen. And I know a lot of these kids play together with each other through the years. That's know. where it's changed a lot. From you know when we remember Bradley Cleveland years ago, I mean, it was just a clash. Mm -hmm. You know, not just on the field, but in the stands, the week leading up to it. Yeah. You know, the the dome would get painted. The bear would get stolen from off the top <laughs> the of the bear would get school. painted. I've get seen painted. that too. <laughs> uh, now these kids, because they play so many different sports, you know, they have them playing summer league baseball together. AAU basketball has you know the, the mix of all teams playing. Mm -hmm. um, we've talked about this on our show is that you can go out Friday night after a football game. And it could be Bradley Cleveland or Cleveland Walker Valley, Bradley Walker Valley, whatever. You go by Steak and Shake or one of those places like that. You're going to see Bradley kids and Cleveland yes. kids all mixed in together and, and hang it out. So, so they are friends. It's not like it used to be. As, they still want to beat each other. I mean, sure. Yeah. Oh, of course. But they don't want to beat each other off the field like what it used to be. And there used to be some, some interesting stuff that yeah. went on leading yeah, up to that. Yeah, for two and a half hours, you know, on a Friday night, they might not be friends. But the minute the, the last, you know, bell blows and before that, after that, it's back on their mm -hmm. friends. And, you know, like I said, you see them out there in the parking lot of checkers and other places just being friends again, being sure. teenagers. And, that, and that's a good thing. You want to keep it clean. You want to keep it fun. And, uh, but, you know, Alan, the exciting thing about our area, we've got some tremendous talent right here uh, in Bradley County this year. Uh, you look around the area, I know uh, Cleveland High School, uh, they've got Austin Herring coming in. He's a junior quarterback, uh, already considered, even though he has, he, he started some for Chad Wojtek last year who was injured, but mm -hmm. Austin has been considered by many as a Division One prospect in college. Uh, some other talented kids on that team stepping up, uh, uh, sophomores and juniors, and then you go down to Bradley. They got a four-year starter, Bryce Copeland, uh, great, great athlete. There's still Basketball. Copeland's playing. Still, and Copeland. he's got a little brother coming yeah, up. I think okay. Damon told us he's going to be in the eighth grade or ninth grade. So there's one behind him, okay. and uh, just a tremendous athlete. And as you know, the Copeland name. There's some athletic family. Exactly. And uh, you know, basketball star, uh, football, and uh, you know, I haven't seen him lately, Travis. Uh, Damon said, uh, you know, this past Wednesday. Uh, uh, they had the coach media days in Chattanooga. We got to go down to it, and Damon stood up and said that uh, uh, Bryce Copeland had put on about 15 to 20 pounds of muscle and weight. That was one of the things that keeping him from being a Division mm -hmm. One prospect. Mm -hmm. So uh, by the end of this season, we may have several boys right here in Bradley County playing, you know, uh, on Saturdays in front of a television. Fantastic. And we've got some who have graduated that are moving. You mentioned Chad. Chad Wojtek is one uh, he of was, them. He went, Pittsburgh? Pitt, Pittsburgh, mm -hmm. Panthers, and uh, okay. he's, he's battling up there. And Henry the, McClendon uh, okay. from Cleveland High School. He's over at Carson Newman now. Uh, uh, James Stovall. James Stovall. Uh, he, uh, he's playing a college ball. He went Navy? to Naval Academy. Navy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, got several other young guys uh, from Bradley that, there's some of them that have been accepted in Carson Newman, had to get some academic things in mm -hmm. line. But uh, Coach, Coach Floyd said that they're, they're working that out. So we could have as many as five or six guys from right here in our area that's playing on Saturdays. That's exciting. It uh, is. And, it you know, is. the Alan, and I hate to keep saying it, but uh, uh, the thing about it is, you know, it's an inexpensive Friday night, five, six, seven dollars. Take your wife, kids, go out there, watch some kids, lay it all out on the line for two and a half hours for their school, playing for the right mm -hmm. reason. You know. I didn't get a chance to see too many games recently. A, a friend of mine had a, a, a son who was playing uh, for Jefferson County mm -hmm. and got to go over and watch Jefferson County play a scrimmage with Cleveland yeah. and some of these kids are I don't remember those kind of athletes when I played we had the big slow uh, linemen and now they look like they're in such good shape yeah. you know that uh, they could run a marathon and then come out there and play a, a full four quarters. Well, I think yeah. a lot of that comes from playing multiple sports mm -hmm. and uh, you know the training now is different you know back then you know we worked during the summer Right. Uh, you, you know, you belt hair, you worked at Walmart, you worked at wherever. Well, these kids, you know, it's 20, 24-7 year-round for them. 
um, just continually, you know, with all the training, you have all these places in town, it's open 24 seven, they can go work out at. Yeah. And, um, so yeah, it's totally different. I saw some of the kids too. I went over to watch practice one night and I kept asking Dr. Massey, I said, who's this kid? Holy smokes, look how he's built. I mean, just yeah. ripped up and, and, and uh, good sized kids. So it'll be fun. There's, there's gonna be a lot of, you know, not just players on the field, but athletes on the field for each team that's gonna be fun to watch this year. Yeah. Okay, not, not picking Walker Valley versus Bradley or Bradley versus Cleveland or, or anything like that. What are a couple of games that we really need to keep our eyes on this year with, with, uh, with other powers that may be playing our team? I think the very first game of the season wow. to kick off is going to be Bradley at Polk County. Oh, it will be huge. huge. Uh, You've got to get there a couple hours before. <laughs> Polk County is going to come out in force. And, you know, the fans are going to be there probably tailgating, cooking out, mm -hmm. whatever, long before kickoff. So right. get there early. That one's obviously the biggest. That's the biggest uh, game in the area. But, and the thing about that is, and come Saturday, that's a Friday night game. But come Saturday, uh, Cleveland's traveling down to uh, Alcoa, uh, playing in the uh, Motor City Mile um, Kickoff Classic. And That's they'll be Maryville. playing Maryville High School, seven-time defending champion, uh, which plays several games a year on ESPN. Right. Th this is a team that's sponsored by Nike, a high school team that Nike pays to wear their uniforms. Uh, so that, that's the kind of action you have around here, Alan, in, in the high school, quality of high school football. Mm -hmm. So. When you mention Alcoa or Maribel, it scares me to death. <laughs> it does. Because we played Alcoa when I was in high school, and they were, they were great then. Always been And Maribel has always got a, right. yep. got a great team. Well, I think uh, between the two of them, you're looking at 13, 14 state championships mm -hmm. there in one county uh, in the last 20-plus years. So, yeah, just a, just a tremendous – but it's a great opportunity for our young people. Coach Crawford said at the media days that, that we attended, uh, he said – you know, one thing I'm telling my boys when I go down there, I said, I want you to see how champions act and how mm -hmm. champions play. Win or lose, that's what I want you to come out of that game with more than anything, and seeing how champions act and champions play, because you're going to see it tonight, guys. And, that, and you know, that, that says it all right there. Fantastic. Um, quick thing about your show, uh, and I'm, I'm going to have uh, uh, Robbie come in, and we're going to talk a little bit about college sports. Yeah, we're going to Robbie but, uh, A little bit about the show. It's on what time? We're on from 5 to 6 on Talk 101.3. The buzz. The buzz. Uh, mm -hmm. Exciting news. We'll go ahead and announce right here. This is the first time it's going public with it, Alan. Mm -hmm. Starting August 6th, we are going to a two-hour show. We'll be on from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. every Monday through Friday mm -hmm. uh, right there on Talk 101.3. So, Cleveland folks, you're stuck with us for two hours now. You know, we, we, just, we just can't get it all set in, Alan. No, no, we had to yeah. stretch well, it out. It's also, during, once the football season starts on Fridays, we'll be doing a tailgate show each Friday coming live from – from a stadium somewhere, one of the Bradley Cleveland Walker Valley games, mm -hmm. uh, we'll we'll set up and okay. invite everybody to come by and talk to us before. Well, we know WTNB here is going to be doing some sports too, and, yes. and you've got uh, Joe Palo, who is a big Dolphins fan. We won't talk pro <laughs> because when you talk about the Dolphins, you're not really talking pro football. Well, the good thing about Joe with the Dolphins is, and this is as long as I've known him, you never know whether they're having a good season, bad season with him because he he's cheering just as hard every week for his team. That's true, that's true. Well, I spent 15 years in Central Florida, uh, Alan, and what I can tell you about a Dolphins fan, they also have a Tampa Bay Buccaneers jersey and a Jacksonville Jaguar jersey, and they just figure they have all of them there, and whoever wins that Sunday is what they wear on Monday. Okay. So. I, I, think, I, I, I think we're getting a cue from the back. Yeah, I thought I heard something there. <laughs> it's time to go into college football around, 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 yes. get away from this. Yes. But uh, Travis, thanks for, yes, for coming sir. on. Uh, We'll be calling you again. We need some more shirts. I'm ready. Uh, but uh, Scott, if you'll hang around, we'll get Robbie out here, and we'll talk a little bit about uh, Travis Bray. Uh, <laughs> heard, he, heard he's had Tyler a, Bray. Excuse me, Tyler Bray. Yes. Travis Godfrey, Tyler Bray. I wasn't there with Tyler when that happened. Just so, to, uh, maybe not. Well, yeah. no, it's I don't know. I left early. We'll, talk, we'll talk a little college football, but <laughs> yes. uh, we're going to take a break now. Travis, thanks. Yes, sir. And we'll be right back after these messages. At Crawford Pharmacy, we offer custom compounding. Our pharmacists are known for their attention to detail and unique expertise. So visit us at 2260 Chambliss Avenue, Cleveland, Tennessee. For personal assistance, walk right in or come up to our convenient drive through Crawford Pharmacy, serving our community one person at a time. Bradley County is home to a community of resilient, compassionate families who want the best for each other. The tragedies of the April 27, 2011 tornadoes brought our community together to bring aid to the hurting and helpless. 
it is time to come together once more. The Bradley County School System is underfunded and our future leaders are receiving their education in substandard learning environments. On August 2nd, you will have an opportunity to further impact our great community by voting for the wheel tax. A vote for the wheel tax will not only rebuild Blue Springs Elementary School, but it will provide a new facility that is engineered to meet the demands that technology places on the infrastructure. The overcrowded Walker Valley High School students and teachers will have much needed space and be able to use academic rooms for their intended purposes. The students and teachers of Lake Forest Middle School will no longer endure the hazardous conditions caused by the elements of nature and deteriorating classroom buildings. British philosopher Herbert Spencer stated, the great aim of education is not knowledge, but action. Would you take action in the name of education and vote yes for the wheel tax? A vote for the wheel tax is a vote for the children and the future of Bradley County. Featuring some of the South's most scenic views, the Mountain View Inn has been a landmark in the Cleveland community for over 40 years. Our executive guest quarters with flat screen TVs and excellent bedding will make any guest comfortable. Carrie's Restaurant is one of Cleveland's favorite with one of the best buffets around. Hello and on behalf of the Hughes family, thank you for so many years of your business and your friendship. You can look at this one or that one, or we're talking uh, uh, which which, uh, which camera to look at uh, for their close-ups, I guess. But uh, Alan Mincy again with Tennessee Valley this morning on this um, Monday morning, starting off the week, talking sports, talking high school sports, and now we're going to talk a little college sports. And we, uh, Scott, we brought in a college sports expert. I understand. Well, yeah, by our standards anyway. We oh, got Robbie. Your standards are real high, right? <laughs> well, <laughs> Uh, yeah. No, we have Robbie yeah, O'Brien okay. with us. Uh, Robbie is a uh, uh, a Louisville fan, from what I understand. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, big big Kentucky fan. Big Kentucky fan. Big Kentucky fan. Basketball and all sports, I'm sure. All sports. Yeah. Is that where you're from? That's from where I'm from originally. Yeah. Okay. Uh, they've they've had their their years. Yes. Uh, of course, basketball. We know that, but they've had some 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 good years in college. Uh, this year, what are we looking at? Well, that's the uh, $10 million question. Uh, you know, last year was the first year in five years they didn't make a bowl game, mm -hmm. but they did get the first win over the Vols in 26 years. So, so that was that was better than, than a bowl game to Kentucky fans. <laughs> yeah, that was their bowl game. Uh, that was I a bowl game. I was to say, there, there are times I'm sure that uh, uh, when a team beats 10, hey, my basketball team, MTSU, beat them in the, the – in in it mm -hmm. yes, and did. we just went crazy we were you know all, so should have beat them in the regular season yeah they had a chance hey we, we want them to play football against us but maybe not this year maybe <laughs> maybe a couple of years ago yes. but uh, asked asked robbie to, to come on and, and uh, scott of course to stay around and talk a little college football because uh as big as high school football is in our area college football is right there with it it's like you 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 know you just sort of segue into it yes. from Friday into Saturday football. Well, you know, the best thing about Allen around here is it just it, it starts uh, Thursday now because we have some college football games on Thursday. True. So we, we, we get some Thursday night football. Then you go out and watch your high school boys play Friday. Uh, just vegetate into Saturday football. Then in NFL Sunday. So And then you got Monday night football. So our wives mm -hmm. don't have a chance in the fall. They just they just give up. Well, and they've thrown some even some football games on in some of these like the Mac or whatever <laughs> on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Yeah, you pretty much catch a game any night of the week if you want to yeah. in the fall. So that's why Heartline watches uh, the, Bachelor the Bachelor on Monday. Yeah. It's the only way you can get away from sports. You always have the SEC replays yes. typically on Tuesday and Wednesday and on sports. CSS. And, yes. and the coaches shows and everything like yeah. that. Uh, isn't technology great? It is, you know, and uh, and, and it is. And, and we're excited about uh, Talk 113, the buzz, and, mm -hmm. and what we can bring. We try to add a local flavor to everything, Alan. You know, we do cover our high school teams in the area. That's our number one uh, priority is local sports with local right. folks. But, you know, we cannot ignore that our local people follow 
college football, we're a huge, you know, we're, like people say the Bible Belt, we're also on the football belt for SEC sports. And our show has a great flavor. We have a, one of our co-hosts is a, a Georgia fan. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, Robbie here is a Kentucky fan. Uh, we have You're obviously a, a Tennessee fan. I'm obviously a Tennessee fan, and then we uh, got that other guy on there. What, that, that team with Jason, the A on it. Jason something. Yeah. Uh, so we got yeah we got Jason Hillerbrand talks about the, the elephant team uh, Alabama. Right. Uh, and uh, so we had a, you know we figured that's a good uh, a representation of Southeastern Conference. If you look around, you know geographically, we cover it well. And uh, you know, so we try to bring a, a little bit of everything. You talk about SEC. I don't hear you, you mention any ten, Texas A&M fans or anything like that. <laughs> yeah, what's, what's this 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 change going to be like this year with well, these new teams? Is, are they coming in this year? They're in. Yeah. They're in this okay. year. It'll be the first year they play. Uh, I think, uh, in, in my opinion, and Robbie, you know, uh, I think SEC East with Missouri coming over to the SEC East instantly got a little tougher. I think Missouri's bringing a little more to the east than Texas A&M necessarily will the west. Mm -hmm. Because I think Alabama and LSU is so far ahead of everybody else right now. that But Missouri, I think, could come in. they got some talented ball players on that team. They can compete, you know, for – and I said that some things has to go right. But that could be a, a second or third seed team if things go well for them. But they could also be a six, you know, six seed if things don't go well. But well, Kentucky gets them at homecoming. So yeah. they're going to find out real quick yes. what Missouri is about. And I guess – do our teams now that we've got uh, two additional SEC teams, are the SEC football teams, do they have fewer dates that they can schedule people besides the uh, SEC teams? They did have to, they have one less non-conference game they can play. They had to add a conference game to the schedule, um, which, you know, uh, in the SEC, if you follow SEC sports, that's not a fun thing to do. Mm. You know, you kind of need those non-conference games to heal, get a little better, learn a little bit about your team. And anytime you add a team that, you know, you look at a team like Missouri and a team like Texas A&M, these are teams that are in bowl games uh, almost every year with their programs, playing for conference championships or, or near the top of their conference, and now they're coming over to the SEC and they're in the middle of the road program. So it, 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 it's, uh, it's interesting. Well, and it also used to be that you could, you could uh, schedule what you considered a cream puff yes. and they'd give you a heck of a game, an Appalachian State, uh, yes. a Central Florida, uh, you know, Southern Miss, something like that that you didn't expect would compete with you. Well, I'm glad you brought that up because we're going to get off the SEC a little bit, but you brought it up. But I'm going to bring in somebody about our own uh, uh, city school director, Dr. Martin Ringstaff. He's a big Virginia Tech coach. Exactly. Yes. They thought they were going to bring James Madison in a couple of years ago <laughs> and just uh, walk all over him, get ready for some conference play, and it didn't go so well for him. You yeah. know, and then Appy State the year before that. Yeah, Appy yeah. State the year before that. You know, Michigan brought him down here to the big house. You know, 100 plus thousand Michigan fans went home crying. Now, so I'm hearing a dig at, uh, at Dr. Ringstaff and and uh, Robbie, your wife is the uh, the principal at Cleveland High School. Uh, Hopefully, she still is. Yeah, <laughs> after this show, well, you know. Yeah. No, I think that uh, that Dr. Ringstaff gets a lot of uh, ribbing about that. Uh, Virginia Tech's got a great program, they but do. yeah, they thought they probably had that one. Yeah, and I want to bring him into because uh, on the sports drive on Friday afternoons, we have our NASCAR segment, and, and Dr. Martin Ringstaff is a huge NASCAR follower. And we have Dean, as you can see, Robbie's our expert, you know, in some uh, Kentucky football and SEC sports. Well, Dr. Ringstaff, we have deemed him our uh, NASCAR analyst. Oh, okay. Uh, and I don't know if that brings as high as honor as having the title doctor, but, you know, we, we figure that's a pretty high honor to be named NASCAR He's our analyst. version of Dr. Jerry Punch. Yes, he is. Okay, okay, and, yeah. Uh, and that's what he calls an air fight. He talk, gives a little update on what's going on in the NASCAR scene. Uh, because the uh, Talk 103 is the official NASCAR network True. for, our, for True. our area. You guys got a lot of things. We do, we do. A lot of things know. going yeah. on. Yeah. Well, let's let's talk just a little bit about uh, some games that are coming up. True. Tennessee starts with uh, NC, State. NC State. That's not a, a pushover, is it? It's not. Uh, uh, the NC State is a team uh, that, you know, there's some, uh, they got a cornerback uh, that I think had 13 interceptions last year. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, what's scary about that is, Tyler Bray, who can be exceptionally great or exceptionally bad, uh, so he's the kind of guy that if he comes in there and Bray's on one of his exceptional bad nights, yeah. it could be a long, long night for Tennessee, and that'll be played on a Friday night uh, okay. there mm -hmm. at the Georgia Dome in Atlanta. Okay, is Tennessee going to be a, uh, more of an offensive or a defensive team this year? Uh, they're offensively they'll be uh, they, they're pretty well stacked on offense. They got okay. three uh, three guys that are probably very well be a, a first round draft pick. Tyler Bray been one of them. Mm -hmm. uh, Justin Hunter, wide receiver, uh, phenomenal athlete. Uh, I think he, he also uh, does long jump for the track team, jumps over 26 feet in, uh, in the track team. And then you got uh, Derek Rogers. And then they got a junior college transfer. His name's Corderell Patterson. And uh, they're saying he only has to play one more year of college that he could very easily be a first or second round draft pick. So offense is, uh, 
is probably the best part of Tennessee, the most known part of Tennessee this year. Defense, little question, got a new defensive coordinator, mm -hmm. bringing in a new system. He comes from the Alabama program, so he comes with, great, with sure, a great pedigree. Not a bad program to come And from. Uh, Yeah, it's definitely not, especially when you look at defense. So, uh, but there's question marks around that defense. And uh, you know, we, we're hoping, though, that uh, South Cincinnati gets it together and uh, okay. you know, gets the Vols to a good bowl game this year. Robbie, uh, Kentucky starts with we'll – we'll give you a little chance to talk a little Kentucky. Well, they start with Louisville. Yeah, it's okay. a big rival game. Big rivalry. Uh, it's going to be on the road at Louisville. Uh, okay. Last year was the first year in, I think, four years that, that they've beaten us. So mm -hmm. we've won four out of five. So it's in that game, it's kind of like, you know, like you guys were saying about the Cleveland Bradley or you know, Walker Valley games. It really right. doesn't. You can throw the records out the window. It's going to be a dogfight. If, if I remember right, when you play Louisville, it's, it's usually an offensive uh, shootout. Typically. Can yeah. Kentucky uh, play with them offensively? Well, they're offensively is, is their strong point. We lost Good. a lot defensively, so I don't know. Okay. A lot of question marks around Louisville, too, though. So, you know, and, and we're, we're an SEC team here. So, you know, hey, Louisville, Kentucky, I'm a Wildcat fan that day. Oh, sure, sure. We're going to pull for them. Yeah. But now who is the cream of the crop in the SEC? Is it still Bama? Do we have to go there? Well, no, you could go to LSU <laughs> if you want LSU. to. Um, yeah. I'm going to say LSU to start with. Yeah, so you, you think in LSU's? I mean, I, I, I think – they have the most impressive roster. Yeah, uh, they did last year too. But then when it, we saw what happened, Alabama won. Well, and you know, well they both won. So really, who's your national champion? Uh, that's still the question mark. It, it's those two teams. It's one of those things that if uh, if they weren't in the same division, mm -hmm. uh, they'd both be coming to the SEC championship game undefeated. If they weren't in the same conference, they'd be playing for the national championship um, easily again next year. I think the two strongest programs in the nation. Uh, they are just, uh, you know. They are so far ahead of all any other program, in my opinion, in in, in sports right now. Football, mm -hmm. talk about football. And they're both in the same, same division. division, same division of the same conference. Right. So, so. and you're talking, we you were talking earlier about adding an additional conference game. That's just making the SEC that much tougher because mm -hmm. some that was one of the proponents for the fourteen playoff. Mm -hmm. If you stick with the BCS, adding an additional conference game doesn't make it any easier for the SEC, and that's an advantage, you know, that some of the smaller, you know, BCS conferences, they're not playing as many conference games. And what's going to kill everybody is that the SEC teams are going to beat each other up. Yes. And you're going to have that team out there uh, in Southern California that we don't like to talk about going to move because they're not bad. No, they're, they're, bad. they're an excellent program. Southern yeah. California or and, Oregon. And, well, that's true, but they're going to move in there and we're all going to say, what are we beating each other up for when we really want to beat them up? So. Well, and that's one of the things that, we're, you know, uh, SEC has against them is because it is such a strong conference. You're going to play seven or eight strong, tough games every year, you know, where other teams are you know, playing, you know, you, you know preseason who's going to win the conference mm -hmm. easily. And so uh, by the time you do get around to bowl season, you know, you, you guess, you know your quarterbacks and you're playing with second-string quarterback or, or running back or, you know, so your key players are down. You're not, going to go, you're not going to go through a season at SEC and not lose a key player yeah. on your roster. And, uh, and it hurts come big game time. And, you know, on the SEC West, too, back to that, uh, I think you're talking about LSU, uh, with Texas A&M coming to that conference, LSU has always been able – a lot of people realize the recruiting aspect of, of, of sports. Yeah. LSU's always been able to recruit real well in the state of Texas. Exactly. A lot of athletes come out of the state of Texas. Now that you bring Texas A&M into the conference – LSU don't necessarily have the edge on the state of Texas in recruiting anymore. True. So that's going to make that, that division of the SEC interesting in years to and come. Missouri recruits well in Texas. They do. At least they did when yeah. they were in the Big 12. So it would be interesting to see if they stick with that formula. Okay, a couple of quick predictions sure. because we're getting close to the end of the program. Yes. Who wins the SEC West? I'm going to go with Alabama. and He's obviously um, – Well, I haven't studied the schedules to see who's playing where, but I, I'm going to go with LSU. Okay. okay. SEC East. Georgia? Uh, you know what? I, you know, your logic would tell you Georgia because they have the talent, but Rick finds a way to mess up, mm -hmm. and I think the old ball coach is going to pull you it off. You think South Carolina's going to I think South Carolina's going to be the, the team in the SEC East this year. I've got South Carolina. South Carolina. Okay. Uh, winners in the SEC champ? Uh, it'll be out of the West. Okay. And I, I'm, so whichever I'm, one. I'm picking, I'm picking Alabama. So I think either way, I think that's the team that's going to win the conference. Okay, national champion. SEC. If it's Alabama or LSU, okay. one of those two will be the national champion. Yeah. yeah do, you, do, you do, you, do you not think there's anybody out there that can compete with us? Well, I think USC would be the, probably the most dangerous team. Okay. But I don't think def defensively when you get down to 
back to the championship bowl game. We have time to do a little heal in the process. And I just think def on the defensive side of the ball, LSU and Alabama is just too strong. Uh, at USC can hang with them offensively, but not defensively. Records. Tennessee? Tennessee, I, I had them at 7-5. and five. I got them going 8-4 and four now. There you go. Tennessee? I'm going to ask you Tennessee. Uh, I'm going to say 6-6. Uh, six and six. Okay. Wow. How about Kentucky? How do you uh, think they're going to do? I'm going to – be cautiously optimistic and say six and six. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, who's going to be the surprise team this year uh, nationwide? You got one? Surprise team nationwide. Uh, I think you better look out uh, for Michigan. Okay. You got a, you got a coach in there. Is, in, you know, Is it Hoke? No. Brady Hope. Okay. Uh, and I think he's got that program running. Got a great quarterback uh, with uh, Donardo Robinson mm -hmm. uh, in there. Uh, he's, what, third, second, third year in that system. Uh, I think they're a surprise team to watch. And with, with what's happening in the wake of Penn State, right. it kind of makes them a, they're definitely a head and heel okay. team there. Well, I was going to say Michigan. But I'm going to say Notre Dame because I think that uh, Brian Kelly needs to get it done yeah. this year being his third year. So I'm going to say the Irish. Okay. Hey, Joe, can you come in here for a second? <laughs> We've only got about two minutes left. Okay. And I want to give Joe the chance to promo his. I'm going to let you promo. You let me promo because you can't read my They're writing? Exactly. I'm going to let you. Hey, I, I think they can hear me. Okay. Are they waiting? Okay, I'm going to stick my head, head on like to the this. studio. Um, yes, we have starting in the fall, obviously, with the, uh, with the great football shows we've got coming on the radio on The Buzz. We've got Football Friday going to be starting, obviously, the first week, the season. We've got a new show called The Pregame which is being put together by Jay Miles and Josh Morrison. And it's uh, kind of a local uh, hard knocks show, yeah. which is going to be based on uh, the, the area of football teams and how they get prepared for the week and for the game of the week. Uh, Walker Valley Sports Zone will return. Uh, my buddy Scott Webb, all of our buddy yes, Scott Webb. We all know Scott. We'll yes. uh, be having that. And then, of course, we lose Spirit Night, the Bradley Cleveland game, where we go out to a, a business and, and get ready for the, for the big ball game, Bradley Cleveland. So... Is that, is, that pro, is that doing all good, Alan? That's, that's wow. pretty good promo that, there, Joe. <laughs> you, should in, you should get into TV. <laughs> that, that'd be, that'd be now I'm going to do the root thing, and I'm going to walk in front of you so I can get back into control. <laughs> Actually, some folks who are watching this would think that's the, the right thing to do, is, is stand in front of me as, as much as you can. <laughs> Guys, once again, uh, the Sports Drive is on. Talk 101.3, The Buzz. You can follow us at The Sports Drive on Twitter. Okay. And also our website is 101.3, The Buzz. From 5 to 6 five, until... August 6th, we go from 5 to 7 p.m. every Monday through Friday. Okay. Who is the best announcer in this, in this group? Who, who's, the, who's, the, who's the smartest guy on the, on the sports drive? We haven't found a smart one yet, okay. so we can't answer that. Who is the most... Well, it's radio, so we won't even ask who the most handsome is. Uh, who is the... Uh, uh, well, I can't even think of good questions to ask. Well, because, yeah, like, well, we can easily say none of us are smart. But probably the least intelligent one would have to be the Bama fan. There we go. I mean, come on. Well, you tell Jason we're sorry he couldn't, he couldn't <laughs> yeah. make it today. Thank you guys for being Thank on with us. Thank you for having us. us. Hey, Thank if you, you want to follow sports, you've got, you know, wow. you got the sports, the sports drive. You've got uh, WTNB. Uh, we'll even put a plug in for the banner and all the things that they oh, do. Oh, that's too. great, great organization over there. So uh, you've got your, your fill of sports in our community. Go Vols. Yes. Go Cats. Go, go Bears. Mostly. Go Mustangs, go Blue Raiders, go, Blue Raiders, yes. go MTSU, whoo, <laughs> got, got, got a pull for the alm water, go Dr. Ring staff, yeah. Uh, yeah. you know, but uh, thanks for joining us today, and we will be back uh, coming up soon on a, on, a, on a Monday on your television, so uh, thanks for joining us. Thank guys, you, you got to wave, that's what we do at the end. <laughs> See you guys. Thank you.